सो लास्ट टाइम वी स्टॉप यर वी लर्न द फिजिकल प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ मिनरल्स लेट एस मूव ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट थिंग आफ्टर फिजिकल प्रॉपर्टीज वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न अबाउट क्रिस्टलोग्राफिक एक्सेस नाउ वॉट इज दिस दे आर इमेजनरी लाइन्स पासिंग थ्रू द सेंटर ऑफ द मिनरल दिस इज जस्ट फॉर अ रिप्रेजेंटेशन पर्पज दिस इज अ रैंडम मिनरल दैट आई हैव चूजन बिकॉज इट ऑलमोस्ट रिजेंबल्स टू वॉट वी आर लर्निंग बेसिकली सो लेट एस से दैट दीज आर द एजिस ऑफ दैट मिनरल एंड फ्रॉम सेंटर आई पास फ्रॉम वन एच टू द अदर एच आई विज ज्वाइन द लाइन एंड इट ऑब्वियसली विल गो फ्रॉम द सेंटर ऑफ द मिनरल आई विल नेम दिस इज ए वन माइनस एंड ए वन प्लस ओके मीन्स द राइट साइड वी हैव योर थ्री एक्सेस एक्स वाई एंड जेड टू द राइट of x is positive left of x is negative above top this is positive downwards is negative i will write here positive and this one would be negative towards observer when it comes in the z it is positive and when it goes away from observer it is negative for z axis okay so here we have uh, same line in the x direction i have named it as a1 minus and a1 plus in the z direction i will name it towards observer plus a2 plus a2 minus and in the y direction i will name it as a3 plus and a3 minus okay now if all three lines are of equal length if all these three lines are of equal length then the naming is done with the same alphabet so you would be thinking that why did i name them all a it it just shows that all these three axes which i have drawn all are of same length if had this any one of the axes was of different length i would name it as b or c or whatever okay the positive for x axis is on right on y it is upwards and on z it is towards the observer this system in which all the three axes are of equal length is called as isometric system iso means same okay isometric system all lengths equal and at right angle to each other important okay three axis system second in this you can uh, just see that one of the axis is not going to be of same length let us see how the naming would be done a1 minus a1 plus a2 plus a2 minus in the z axis and x axis in the y axis it will be b plus b minus you can write it as b1 b uh, plus b1 minus not a problem the naming uh, the, the naming rule should not change if one of the lines is of not equal length then the alphabet is changed such system in which two axes are of equal length and one axis is unequal is called as tetragonal system and all the axes should be right angled to each other again only for representation purpose here we have a minus a plus b minus b plus and c minus c plus so all the three axes are of different length but they are right angle to each other okay so such such a system where all the three axes are of different length is called as orthorhombic system and all axes are unequal but are right angled to each other moving on to the next one here we have a1 minus a1 plus a2 minus a2 plus now see we are going uh, we are not following our normal cartesian coordinates or uh, x y z axis we are going in the we are basically inclining that so we are in the inclined axis now a2 minus a2 plus a3 minus a3 plus so uh, how many axes we have drawn 1 2 3 okay and this is the fourth one b plus uh, b minus b plus and sorry this should be b minus here that's a mistake b minus right we have something called as actual ratio in which length of this a1 divided by length of a2 
और लेंथ ऑफ ए वन डिवाइडेड बाई लेंथ ऑफ ए थ्री लेंथ ऑफ ए टू डिवाइड बाई लेंथ ऑफ ए थ्री लेंथ ऑफ ए टू डिवाइड बाई लेंथ ऑफ बी एक्सेट्रा एक्सेट्रा दिस इज कॉल्ड एज एक्शल रेशियो ओके एंड दिस इज अ फोर एक्सेस सिस्टम सिंस आई ऑलरेडी टोल्ड यू वी हैव वन टू थ्री एंड फोर एक्सेस सो दिस इज अ फोर एक्सेस सिस्टम सिमिलरली देर कैन बी मल्टी एक्सेस सिस्टम ऑल्सो फाइव एक्सेस सिक्स एक्सेस दैट दैट इज इट सो सच अ सिस्टम इज कॉल्ड एज हेक्सागोनल सिस्टम Three axes are horizontal and equal at 120 degrees. You see, there is a hexagon formed here, right? Three axes are horizontal, and they are at 120 degrees apart. So this angle is 120 degrees. Okay. Fourth axis is vertical. This crystallographic axis, you can see a minus a plus, b minus b plus, and the third one, c minus c plus. But this third one is not at 90 degrees. If you see in uh, all previous cases when we saw our crystallographic axis, they were at 90 degrees to each other, except for the hexagonal system in which it was at 120 degrees. But here. it's a three axis system in which only one of the axis is always inclined with respect to other two axis so if you see a and b they are at 90 degrees to each other but the c axis is inclined to both of them it is inclined to a as well it is inclined to b such a system is called as monoclinic system in which mono means one and this c l i n clin clin generally means that uh, just wait clin means inclined okay from this it has come clin in this system we have one axis second and third and all three axes are inclined with respect to each other if you see in this so such a system is called as triclinic system in which mostly axes are unequal in length and all all of them are inclined to each other so tri means three and this clin means inclined we move on to our next topic after crystallographic axis which is called as formation and descriptive study of minerals which is rock forming minerals so there are primarily three categories first is silicate group second is oxide group and third is carbonate group out of which silicate group is of more importance we will learn this in detail silicate group in itself has few sub categories first is feldspar pyroxene amphibole and mica these are the examples in feldspar we have orthoclase microclin albite anorthite and in pyroxene we have enstatite hypersthein diospide augite in amphibole we have anthophyllite tremolite actinolite hornblende in mica we have muscovite and biotite in oxide group we have uh, not limited to these i have just for for the sake of mentioning here i mentioned the three examples but there are multiple examples you can find in the book uh the book that would you should be referring for geology would be parbin singh so we have your quartz corundum spinel in carbonate group we have calcite dolomite and magnesite let us study the structures of these how how they are formed basically so for that we'll have to first study silicate group and the atomic structure of silicate group we have a silica this is the atomic structure one silica atom is there si4 plus and to suffice this 4 plus we need four uh, more atoms and those are of oxygen so oxygen 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 here we have four okay if i join them i will get a structure something like this 
this structure is named as tetrahedron okay and when you see it from the top the top view it will look something like this where this this i will just number them 1 2 3 and let's say this is fourth so this is 1 2 3 and this is that fourth atom which is coinciding with the silica when it when it is seen from the top this is called as silicon oxygen tetrahedron or sio4 minus unit this is one unit of silicon oxygen tetrahedron or sio4 minus what is called as double tetrahedron when we have two such tetrahedrons with a common oxygen see there are two tetrahedrons here but they both share a common oxygen correct this is called as a double tetrahedron okay now normally uh, i would have given you time to you know copy all these things so what i would suggest is you just pause the video and uh, copy these structures because these structures these diagrams are important after double tetrahedron we have something called a single dimension single chain structure so we have here one sio4 unit now we can recognize this as a sio4 unit we have another sio4 unit let me just twist this rotate this and let me just slide this so what it is forming is a double tetrahedron basically it is forming a double tetrahedron but it is in the form of chain so when when i attach this with one more tetrahedron and again and again and again it forms a chain this is called as single dimension single chain and the example for this is pyroxene group under silicate group we studied multiple right feldspar pyroxene mica etc so this comes uh, this structure is generally a characteristic of pyroxene group next we have a single dimension single chain let us take one more single dimension single chain let us join them this is what we get single dimension double chain and the example for this is amphibole group okay third one double dimension double chain so we have your single dimension double chain let us take one more single dimension double chain and join them we get something called as double dimension double chain or it is also called as sheet structure and the example of this is mica group all right now we will be studying the characteristics of feldspar group and uh, this is uh, the last topic of this particular module basically the feldspar group uh, no not the feldspar group but after we study all the groups in detail that would be the final topic of that module the feldspar group right so i have just differentiated it into various characteristics or the first one is chemical composition atomic structure what would be the crystallization for this and what would be the classification chemical composition is x y 4 o 8 where x is either sodium potassium calcium barium something like that and y would be al suffix a si suffix b where this aluminum and silicon basically and this a and b a plus b should always be equal to 4 okay so the chemical composition is something like you can either take any one of this here let's say na i will just for an example you know na al1 si3 o8 so this will this will be a general structure a general chemical composition of this particular group so yeah <coughs> again here ca al2 si2 o8 something like this then atomic structure will be three dimensional sio4 tetrahedron you see that the last that we saw previously was double dimension double chain correct it was a 2d structure 
how many structures did we see first we see a uh, first we saw single tetrahedron unit then we saw a double tetrahedron unit then we saw a single dimension single chain single dimension double chain double dimension double chain correct but this is three dimensional when we have double dimension double chain structure in 3d that will form a three dimensional structure and that is your atomic structure for feldspar group so obviously i could not show that in the diagram that is why we did not study it separately crystallization is in monoclinic that is what is a crystallographic axis of for this it is either in the monoclinic or in triclinic monoclinic meaning only one axis is inclined triclinic is all three axis would be inclined classification for this is potash feldspar and soda lime feldspar potash feldspar is orthoclase sanidine microline just few examples soda lime feldspar would be albite labradorite oligoclase etc okay next we move on to the pyroxene group again same classification in chemical composition we have x si1 o3 so now remember this si and o silicon and oxygen it will always be in the ratio of 1 is to 3 and x will be calcium sodium aluminum lithium magnesium etc so this would be one of the examples atomic structure is one dimensional single chain we already saw it previously crystallization is monoclinic and orthorhombic it can either be in monoclinic or either orthorhombic classification is monoclinic pyroxene and orthorhombic pyroxene the examples would be enstatite and hypersthene for monoclinic pyroxene and for orthorhombic it would be augite and diospite third one the amphibole group chemical composition is this big formula that you see x si4 o11 twice oh twice this will be in the ratio of 4 is to 11 and uh, example are this ca2 mg5 si4 o11 twice oh twice and this one the atomic structure is one dimensional double chain for amphibole crystallization is monoclinic and orthorhombic classification would be monoclinic amphibole orthoclinic and orthorhombic amphibole for monoclinic amphibole it will be tremolite actinolite and for orthorhombic amphibole it will be anthophyllite the last one the mica group chemical composition is x sin o10 oh twice where n is generally 2 3 4 etc these are the examples atomic structure is two dimensional double chain or sheet structure as we already saw this crystallization is in monoclinic and classification is light mica or dark mica light micas have uh, example as muscovite and paragonite and dark micas have example biotite and phlogopite so this was it for today's lecture in the next lecture we will be starting a new topic um, till then take care thank you